TV as we get ready to take the last 12 trips of 2022 calendar year. The first World Cup back here since 2019 for all sorts of reasons that we are all very well aware of. And great to be back in the Adirondacks, back in Lake Placid and back sliding on one of the toughest tracks on the planet. Well, they say you only need two sleds to make a race. We've got more than that covered by just eight hundreds of a second. The top four covered by eight hundreds. Grab all of the Britain and Bites in third place. The space is never in the middle of the chat on the chest in the team. The team that he sits at 600 gold. gold. Mikkel Brink is 100 gold. The Swiss putting in a really impressive first heat, almost problem free. But the man who was first down the mountain is first, Christoph Harfer took his first ever World Cup medal in four-man with a bronze in Park City just two weeks ago. And he too made mistakes early on in the run. He's got stuff to tidy up. If he can correct that, this could be a very big early Christmas present for him. So where's Francesco Friedrich, I hear you ask? Well, he's in the mix as well. In fourth place, just eight hundreds back, only two hundreds out of a medals. And on this track, in the mix too, is Johannes Lochner and possibly also Cedric Folador, who had a great run through to finish in sixth place, just a few hundreds ahead of Taylor Austin of Canada and Marcus Treichel of Austria. They're covered by six hundreds. Pat Norton, Seaman Friedley, Frank Del Duca, three sleds, two hundreds. Think we're going to have fun? Oh yeah, baby, you better believe it. And it is going to be entertaining all the way down. This is such a tough track for four-man sleds. It's tough for two-man, even tougher with the big dogs because they have so much more weight to maneuver on and off the fast transitions. Once you get out of whiteface turn four, it comes at you like a train crash. So athletes making their final warm-up preparations in the glamorous location of the truck turning circle at the top of the track. But it is looking beautifully wintry here. A week ago, it was still uh, just leaves on the ground and mud, but uh, two or three nights of snow have made it look absolutely picture perfect. And it is great to be back here in Lake Placid, a town that lives for the summer and lives for the winter too. Edson Bindelati of Brazil completed the first heat upside down. The sled is damaged though. They will not be able to drive in the second run. And that means that Jeff Gabois of the USA will get things underway. And Christoph Harfer will have the longest wait of his career as a World Cup driver, last out of the changing room. Track is clear for the start of the final run, race three of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup here in Lake Placid. Jeff Gabwa with his crew, Carsten Vissering, Quentin Willey and Darius Joseph, all newcomers to the World Cup this season behind the returning Jeff Gabwa. This home ice for him. World Cup best so far, 11th place two weeks ago in Park City, Utah. He's in 12th after the first heat. Oh, and he's struggling to get in. It was a very rocky, roly ride first time down. Let's see if he can find a little bit more this time. 5.25 getaway. So they are just a whisker shy of their first. Tidier, though, down to corner four. That helps keep the speed alive from that push. And then out of five. Six, seven, all the way down this fast labyrinth that is the Devil's Highway into Shady. Well, it's looking pretty good down through the lower labyrinth. Let's see how he gets through the chicane. Decent speed, not a bad line, didn't hit too much on the way through. Over 81 miles an hour at this stage already. And a good run through the three-corner heart at the bottom, then up through 20 to the line. 55-89, better than the 55-98 in the first heat. So 900 of a second improvement, but still a little bit of a downcast look on the face of Jeff Gobwa. He knows there is more there. Knows the track well. Let's take a look at the load. He gets hooked up on the seat. Gets his feet caught around the D-ring, having to look down to see what it's caught on. Crew are loading behind him, needs his hands on the D-rings as they exit the drive lines. Luckily, they got in quietly and in the chicane. 
avoids the tag on the left, gets the tap on the right that sets him up for 17. He is our leader. We have 11 sleds to go. Frank Del Duca in 11th place with Adrian Adams, Martin Christofferson and Manio Mitchell on the back of the sled. They had problems loading in the first heat. Adrian Adams didn't slip off the bunk but somehow didn't get cleanly into the sled either at two. Let's hope that they are a little more relaxed getting in this time. Frank Del Duca. Thirty-three hundreds in hand over teammate Jeff Gabois. World Cup best for him was also in Park City with a seventh. Drops in nicely. That was a much tidier load. Five twelve. The speed over the ice is the same, but the velocity should be so much better because there were bodies out in the airstream. Little skid into corner three. That's where the lose track comes in from the second start there. Better speed than his teammate. The gap grows. Fifty-eight hundreds. This is looking good by Del Duca. He's definitely not pushing at 100% fitness, but he is driving nicely. These are really nice lines from Frank Del Duca. Comes out of 14 nicely through the chicane. 81.7 miles an hour. Nicely through the heart and across the line, he is going to be comfortably the leader. How much in front? 68 hundredths of a second. Well, the final third of the track from Benham's Bend on down was pretty much level with Jeff Gabois, but he'd made the advantage early on. 55-54 compared to 55-65 in the first heat. Nothing is ever perfect here, that's for sure, but that was better. We'll take a look at the load. They all get in neatly. Watch the man on the left of your screen, Adrian Adams. In fact, it's Adrian's at three, so it's Martin Christofferson who was at two earlier. Not the way they're written down on our entry list, but it was Christofferson who loads from the driver's left of the sled who had problems in the first heat. They all get in this time. Hey, congratulations to those inducted into the USABS Hall of Fame. It's an honor to share the ice with you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, there are a lot of those delighted to be joined by Steve Messler, who was inducted last night. He uh, called the two-man race with me yesterday. Seaman Friedley, rookie Andrea Orsinger, Greg Jones and Andreas Haas next for Switzerland. 100th in hand over Frank Del Duca. And he will need a tidier run than his first. He gets in better than he did in the first heat as well. Boys are in and down. 5.15. Out started by the Americans. And Del Duca is not yet healthy. Little tap to square him up out of three into corner four. White face. And then starting to plunge down the Devil's Highway. Look how quickly the sled whips by these cameras. Whoa, 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 whoa. 8-9, not too clever, out of 10, Shady 2, named after the old Shady corner on the old track. Out of 14, Benham's Bend, shooting the chicane, no, it's a mess, skidding on to 17, that'll cost him more time. Still going downhill here, but from 18, they start to climb up through corner 19, and then 20. And at the line, 21 hundreds back, 55-7-6. Now, Frank Del Duca, although he's a relatively new driver, does know the track. Seaman Friedley, also a relatively new driver, sliding now in the front seat for four years. But he does not know this track, has not driven here before, so not surprising that he dropped 12 hundreds on that run. There's a a good indication of when the sled comes off and you need it to be going in the opposite direction to the way it wants to. The front and the back argue with the driver. Well, he didn't panic in the chicane, but watch him going away here. Taps the chicane and the second tap puts him into a sideways skid going into 17. Lots to learn about this track. And that remains the case for Seaman Friedley. Frank Del Duca leads for the USA from Seaman Friedley and Jeff Gabois. Fourth sled on ice, final heat of 
2022, the calendar year for four-man bobsleigh. Rookie Pat Norton with Ashley William, David Cachero and Sean Fraser in the sled. Pat Norton finished in 13th in the two-man, has competed in a four-man race here, pushing Nick Polignato, but this is his first being able to see where he can go. 5.29 getaway, an improvement of their 31 first start. So 1,500s behind as they sit down. They will need to find more speed on the ice because they're not getting it at the start. Del Duca's lead grows. Pat Norton, first drive here as a rookie pilot. Still handling the track nicely. Gets a good run at the chicane. Little tap there will set him up nicely in 17. Better speed than we saw from the US sled. Frank Del Duca still half a second back. I beg your pardon. Pat Norton still half a second back from Fran Del Duca. Del Duca and his crew stay in the leader's box. 56-1-1 for Pat Norton. Ah, they drop two spots because they're behind Seaman Freedy as well, but it's run, run volume that he needs just to finesse his driving skills. And he knows that as much as anybody else. Again, getting these four men as they start over-speeding downhill into the sled requires a lot of time and effort to make it look effortless. They get in neatly, and the chicane, he was right over on driver's left. And then a tiny tap here just sends him to the right into the left-hander that follows, and that puts him just about where he wants to be. So four sleds down and eight to go here in Lake Placid. Next up, Marcus Treichel, Sasha Stepan and Christian Huber. They were joined last week for the first time by Marcus Sammer. And today, the 34-year-old, known in the team as Opa, Grandpa, starts his 100th World Cup in two-man and four-man. So congratulations to the evergreen Marcus Summer, World Cup number 100. Let's see what these guys have got. Eighth place in the first heat. And they could, with a bit of luck in the following wind, have a shout for the medals. 5-11 is a big start from them as well. They know every hundredth will help their driver. He gets the regulation tap out of three, straight into four, 14 hundreds up. They had a tenth over Frank Del Duca from the first heat. Don't forget for the Europeans, it's three years since they're on this ice in any way, shape or form because of the travel restrictions. Marcus with the lead, it's a hundredth. Best speed of all though, just a little skittery into 17. This is going to be very close indeed. Their 400's back, will he pull it back? No! Mistake there in 18-19, he's behind at the line by a 10. Uh, disappointing, I'm afraid, for Marcus Treichel and the crew, but you can see Frank Del Duca and his boys very happy with that. They will be no worse than eighth. They've picked off another one. Well, here in the chicane, comes down on driver's right, but the sled is already moving to the left. Then he takes a tiniest little nudge there, breaks into a skid, and that puts him crossed up into 17. So he has to work hard for it there. And then here, brings it down early, hits the short wall before 18, before 19, and then, yeah, Frank Del Duca and his boys, Adrian Adams, going <laughs> ballistic there. Well, not the luckiest 100th run for Marcus Sammer. There's Marcus Treichel. Great to see Sammer back in the sled, though. There he is. Frank Del Duca leads from Marcus Treichel and Seaman Friedley. Five down, seven to go. Taylor Austin of Canada next up with Cyrus Gray, Shaquille Murray-Lawrence and Mathieu Gosselin, the new entry 
to the team this season. 13 hundredths of a second in hand. These are, on some tracks, big margins. On this, nothing at all. Oh, you could give away 13 hundredths, I was about to say, by turn four. And he's given away some of that. Oh, again, big, high, sweeping lines. Sled is not doing what he was expecting it to. 12 hundredths back. Now can he close? Settle the ship, come down, bring that height out of 10. Down through the labyrinth, Benham's bend. Does he get a good break from the chicane? He does. Best speed of all. Gap's coming down, it's a tenth of a second. He can make that up with a clean run through the heart. It's going to be to the hundredth. It's going to be Canada or the USA. It is a tie. It is Canada and the USA. Lyndon Rush on the right. And on the left of that shot, the man who's won the last three four-man races on this track, Justin Cripps. Well, I was talking with the boys on the finish deck before we came on air, and they were going, who's going to win it? I said, we could have a dead heat for gold. We still could. We've got a dead heat now for no worse than seventh. Well, Taylor Austin, bronze medal in the four-man in Whistler. But here, oh, rocking and rolling. <laughs> Justin Cripps enjoying that Let's one. Come, share this box. Come, on. Come on and share the box. Eight men in the leader's box now, and none of them small. All right. We have joint leaders. Are we going to put a third sled in there? Cedric Follador, 17 hundreds ahead of Frank Del Duca, but he only had 400s in hand over Taylor Austin. Sixth after the first of two heats. And that was a great first run from Cedric Follador. Former brakeman, relatively inexperienced driver, first World Cup season for him. Nicola Marini, uh, Mariani, I beg his pardon. Dominic Hofschmidt and new boy Marco Durig on the back. It's a young crew, they got plenty of speed at the start, enough to give their driver what he needs to work with. 900s, the gap's coming down, but the speed is good. A whisker quicker than Del Duca, who has the fastest trip down so far. He's not gaining, he's not losing. 1100 is not enough. One mistake can take that away. 1200 and a great chicane from Cedric Follador. This could be a big, big run for the Swiss driver. Looks nice, 1400, he's going to take the lead. This is going to be a World Cup best, it is. 55 56. Well, at some stage, I'm sure the Canadians and the US crew knew they were not going to win the race, but that is a personal best. Seventh in Whistler. Cedric Follador will be no worse than sixth here. Seventh in Whistler, eighth in Park City, at least sixth here. That's a good run from Cedric Follador. Little bit of height there, didn't panic. And look at this. Now, when you've got no knowledge of the track, and he's got no knowledge, he's done six runs in total in training and two more in the two-man yesterday. So eight trips, nine trips. This is trip number 10. If you get the chicane straight, it is more luck than judgment at that stage, but two consistent runs from Cedric Follador, just eight hundredths of a second difference between them. Now then, Cedric Follador leads, 3600 separated him from the lead in the first heat, but 1400 separated Hansi Lochner from the lead, and he's fifth. 2200s in hand over the Swiss. Wasn't feeling the love for the four man at all in training. Won the two man yesterday with two quite wild rides. Let's see what he's got for the final run before Christmas. 5.04 is a fraction quicker. Nice exit. 
36 hundreds is out another tenth. He can win gold from 14 hundreds back on this track. He really can. This just needs to be really good. The speed's not great at Shady 2. 47 hundreds, the increments have stalled. He's not gaining any more time. 46 hundreds, he's losing time now to the guys that will come behind him. Oh, little nudge away. Passing, having to rescue that in the heart is not great. And across the line, he'll take the lead, but still four to go. 55-42, the first man to go quicker, I think, than Frank Del Duca. He is indeed Frank's trip, a 55-54, Hansi a 55-42. And Johannes Lochner, last time we were here, was racing. He took silver behind Justin Cripps and ahead of Francesco Friedrich in the last World Cup race here in 2019. Well, not a bad run through the chicane, but below, yeah, 17-18, came hard and late off 18. Nearly crashed there in the first heat of the two-man. So here we go. We've got four to go. Lochner leads by 36 hundreds. Who takes the medals? Francesco Friedrich is always a good bet, but he has never won a four-man race here. Francesco has one bronze medal in World Cup starts on this track. And he's been coming here since the World Championships in 2012. Is this the day where he really turns his fortunes around? 5-0-6, they're not hanging around, are they? Felix Straub on the back of the sled, new boy in the field. 200 re meter relay world champion 2021. He's on the back of the handles, back handles. 200's up on Johannes Lochner. Francesco needs a good run. Better speed than Lochner here, out of Shady 2. Here we go. Creeping away, 300s up. Don't forget, he was not the leader. He was not in the medals in the first heat. Gets a good run through the chicane. He's a 10th up. This could be a medal-making run for Francesco Friedrich. Here we go. Ooh, skidding from 18 to 19 and across the line. 3100s, 55 300s faster than his first heat. That's an important run. You just saw the little clenched fist there from Francesco. That was better. That was definitely better. So he leads with three to come. Who gives away a medal? You don't normally have to give one away to Frances Francesco Friedrich. He normally comes grabbing them. Nice load from the driver, nice load from the crew. Man on the back, Felix Straub remembered the brake handles this time immediately. Gets the tap, the tap. Driver's left Driver's coming left out of the chicane. Sets him up to 17. 17. Not, Not too shabby at all. Francesco Friedrich takes the lead from Hansi Lockdown. Set it to the corridor. Three to go. Three to go. Brad Hall for Great Britain, Aaron Gulliver, Taylor Lawrence, Greg Cackett. They lie in third place, 200s advantage over Francesco Friedrich, the current leader from Heat 1, and only 600s away from the lead. It's been a good start to the season for Brad Hall. Silvering Whistler, fourth in Park City. He's taken medals with the two-man as well. Let's see if he can keep himself in the medals here. 5.04, that's a huge start from the crew. That is equaling Johannes Lochner's crew as the fastest starts in the competition. 200s up from the first heat, out to 700. Speed not quite as good as we saw from Francesco Friedrich. Let's see if he's got good speed. He's got good speed, not great speed. Big skid off 10. 
800's up, could be down to nearly nothing by the next clock. This is going to be very close. Needs a good chicane, gets a good chicane. Speed is decent. Five hundredths of a second in it. Two hundredths of a second in it. Not enough speed. If he avoids a skid, he could yet be in front. He is by a hundredth. He's in the medals. Wow. Wow. Knew this was going to be tight. It was tight. He was 200 quicker than France in the first heat, 100 slower in the second. That's how tight this racing is. And this is a tough driver's track. Well, he's had one career bronze medal in four man so far, four silvers, and he will add at least a bronze to that tally. Two sleds to go covered by a hundredth of a second in the first heat. Graham Richardson, yes, in the medals again. What a great start to the season. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas to you, Brad, as well. And Francesco, as always, first to offer congratulations. So what about this then? Mikel Vogt, Cyril Bieri, Alan Nusa, and Sandro Michel. Fourth place in Whistler, tantalizingly close to the medals. Mikel Vogt nearly led here by a hundredth he trailed. His advantage over Brad Hall, five hundredths. This is effectively a dead heat. Oh, one wins, one run takes it. A disaster, a loading nightmare. And that is the medal gone, I'm afraid. Absolutely heartbreaking for the crew. Nothing that Mikel Vogt can do now is going to make enough difference. And I don't, I'm not entirely sure they're in comfortably yet. The sled is really rocking and rolling around. He's got to get this under control. They all, they all are in. Oh my goodness. Well, we talk so often about how hard it is to get four huge athletes at maximum speed into these tiny sleds. And that showed exactly how hard it can get. Mikel Vogt drove his heart out to try and rescue it. 56-49. That is the one that got away. And there will be only one person blaming anybody and he'll be blaming himself but it happens it happens in training it happens in practice and when it happens in the race it's devastating but like skaters falling on ice it does happen so where do we go it's a, it'll be a missed step on the bunk no again like the u.s sled in the first heat didn't quite, somehow just quite couldn't get in. And then, oh, oh, ow, ow, ow. Head on the roof, crew trying to pull him in as he's burning his back on the wall. It's tough, it is tough, but it happens. And it happens to everybody and everybody knows it. And that will have put the right jitters up Christoph Harfer's crew. Mikel Salzer at two, the returning Kevin Corona, who hasn't slid since the World Championships with Nico Walter in 2021 and Tobias Schneider. This is for gold, 5-11 getaway. They must beat Brad Hall here. They only had 600s from the first heat but they start 700 slower. Harfer has to drive to gold. Brad Hall, Francesco Friedrich, Johannes Lochner, that's the top three. This is not a given by any stretch of the imagination. If Harfer takes this, it will be a huge win for him. 900s, it's doable. He is behind, but he's still in the medals as of now. Good chicane, not bad, 1100s. 
He's going to have to do something extra special in the heart to take it. It's not happening for Christoph Harfer. It's going to be gold for Brad Hall, his first career four-man victory. Harfer takes bronze, Friedrich the silver. But Brad Hall, Aaron Gulliver, Taylor Lawrence and Greg Cackett win gold. Merry Christmas, boys. And Christoph Harfer, close, but another career bronze his second in three races great stuff from Christoph Harfer well the last time I saw Kevin Corona he was in floods after the world championships when Nico Valter announced that he was retiring and now he is in the medals with a whole new team and a brand new driver and Christoph Harfer Barring a couple of tiny errors, could have taken his first career gold. Greg Cackett, look at him, hands on head, can't believe it. And Brad Hall takes victory. And Francesco Friedrich there, high-fiving everybody and congratulating and commiserating, still goes winless here in Lake Placid. Victory for Brad Hall of Great Britain. And the last British four-man gold was also in a World Cup race in North America. And that was the now-retired Lamindine claiming victory in Whistler. So Brad Hall takes it. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hey! There they are. <laughs> Big T on the left. New boy Aaron Gulliver on the right-hand side. Well, none of his teammates know what it's like to win a four-man gold at the World Cup either. But now they've all shared that together. 100. That's how tight this is. And Francesco Friesi will have to keep coming back because this track continues to taunt him. Christoph Harfer in third. Johannes Lochner in fourth. Great run from Cedric Follador for fifth. And Taylor Austin for sixth position and disappointment for Edson Bindilati and also for Mikael Vogt and his crew after what could have been a great run, second in the first heat and that missed load cost them a medal and dropped them to the tail of the top 10. Well, it's been a long time coming. They've been knocking on the door and knocking on the door in two man and four man last season the season before the season before this season and finally brad hall has his first four-man win a big big day for team gb and for brad hall and the boys yes well there you go and that is it for 2022 that is it for lake placid francesco friedrich leads the world cup standing still from brad hall and hansi lochner taylor austin up to fourth ahead of Mikkel vogt and he drops down to sixth as marcus trichel also ties him but with a better result record he has that fifth place cedric follador in sixth swiss bobsledding has really been working well here in north america and so too have the Germans and the Brits. So, three World Cups down. World Cup number four is the first weekend of 2023 in Winterberg, Germany. We will see you there. On behalf of everybody in the IBSF TV crew, all my guests throughout this North American swing, thanks for being with us. Have a great holiday break. Enjoy your Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you in Winterberg. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.